Hey guys, welcome to Algos Explain. My name is David Kim, and today I'm going to bring you a video about uh, kind of me uh, and my experiences with the YouTube API iframe. Um, no, sorry, YouTube iframe API, and that is going to be this guy right over here. When you embed a video onto your website, you want to have um, as much control over it as you can or as you want. And some of the things that I experienced when I was working with YouTube embedded. Um, videos was that I didn't have the control that I wanted just from that simple YouTube uh, embed uh, URL that they give you. Like I was working with a website uh, created from HTML5up. If you go to HTML5up.net you can see a bunch of their layouts. They don't sponsor this. Um, I'm just giving them a shout out because I love their work. And So pretty much what I was doing was I had a video and once I played the video I was and once I got out of the modal view you would expect that the video would stop playing because it's not in your view anymore but for some reason it was constantly playing and so I needed a way to stop that video from playing and um, I did a lot of searching a lot of a lot of questioning about how I can change this stuff with JavaScript or whatnot but um, the simplest answer that I did end up getting and what I ended up using was um, uh, it, uh, utilizing this um, API from YouTube as um, it can, I mean, it can be used for the simplest things like what I needed it for, pausing a video when it was not in view anymore, or you can use it for something more complicated like skipping places, or maybe you want to fully customize your own player on your website. They also let you do that too. And so I have much of the work already done. Um, I'm just going to go over it with you. Kind of what I started out with was um, this HTML5 site. This is a static HTML5 site, and it was not made in React. And right now, it is um, on the verge of being converted into React. I'm probably not going to continue this one because this is not my real project. I just threw this together to kind of demonstrate this iframe thing. But um, pretty much what I, w what I was trying to do was I was trying to change this index.html, this, all of that into React. And so far, what I have is I have my... Um, this first page is kind of what everything goes into. Entry is just your typical entry for React. First page, if we look down here, this is what I'm returning. And you can see that on the nav, you have a bunch of, you have like four uh, clickable links for modals. But right now, I only have one. I'm only importing one because I, I just created that one for this project. So if you click these, nothing happens. But if you click that one, it uh, has that iPlayer that I put in there, or iframe player. So the first thing to know when you uh, when you're trying to use this iframe API is that you're going to want a div with um, the ID player and I have that right over in my intro. So this is the intro model that we're looking at. This is the intro component that I created and what it does is it's going to look for something like this and once it has it, let me show you in the inspector what it's going to look like. It's going to change into the iframe. So see how it went from that to that. Maybe if I refresh it, we can see a change. Nope, it was too fast. But uh, right under the H2 class major intro, you have that iframe. And if you look at over here, mm, wherever my code is, right over that major intro title, uh, you can see that I don't have an iframe there. I have a div. And there are ways, if you really want to have an iframe here instead of a div, there are ways to do it. The, um, the web page here, it explains how you can do that if you want, but um, I personally haven't found any advantages to it. Maybe maybe there is a reason you need to do that, but um, as far as this uh, video goes, we're not going to go over that. But, um, so okay, so we have the ID player here that allows um, the API to inject the video into wherever, and all that video information comes from the script. And on this page, they give you this great getting started um, script over here. I took that and I kind of took out the things that I didn't need. I added some things that I did need. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. This is kind of where um, the injection happens and the defining of your player happens. You can do the height and the width and the video ID. That is just going to be kind of... Let's go to YouTube and show you real quick where you can find that. So let's click on the <laughs> SNL video. 
and if you click on share and embed um, you get this whole URL here or this iframe element and you can't do a lot of things with this um, there are certain things you can but as far as what I wanted to do like getting or pausing the video when it's a modal close I, I didn't have that kind of power and so pretty much this this is what I want to show you right over there that is going to be what you're adding right over here that's the video ID and if you look at the sample that they give you here they have events I took that out on mine and so they have a video ID and they go into events I took that out on mine because I don't need that uh, but I did want player bars and rel 0 what that does for your video is once you play and pause it specific option uh, there's no like extra videos that come out suggested and in terms of the video being on your site uh, I highly recommend that you get rid of that like I did simply because you have no control over what shows up on there for your viewers and um, of course it's going to be catered to them YouTube caters to them and what they're interested in but say it has nothing to do with your website then why why even allow that to happen when you have the freedom to get rid of it and so that's how you, that's how you get rid of it you can put in other stuff that's an object um, but in terms of this events thing that I took out, I took it out because their demonstration was that um, once it was ready, they had the players, uh, the video, play the video for 60 seconds or 6 seconds, and then they ran the stop function, stop video function. We don't need that. So I took out the stop video function also, and I, or I replaced it with my own, which was just player.stop video. And so this is a script, this is a JS. Uh, JS file and where I have that is at the top of my scripts and it's important that or the positioning of this is important in terms of uh, where you're going to use those functions that you just created the way I created this one was um, the close and just getting rid of that visual that action is being uh, calculated in the main JS and so if we go over here um, or I should have pause video so I added that over here. I realized um, sometimes when modals are created, if in a if a particular cases um, in particular cases, sometimes the uh, React events don't trigger. Like this intro, when I click it, it does not register any on clicks. And I think I had something like that. Yeah, I was testing it out on clicks. It does not do the console logs. So when I clicked on that, spam it, whatnot. Um, oh, here it is. No, no console logs for that. And so, what I wanted to do was, I um, I looked for the events that triggered when this was invisible, which was clicking out of it, or when you click the X button. And that stuff, I found it in the main.js. And so, when I clicked on the close, I paused the video and when I when the article wasn't visible which pretty much if you click on the body then I paused the video and that um, before before I had that it wouldn't do that and so maybe I'll show you real quick uh, what it looks like when it, it wasn't there um, since we're at this page anyway so just two uh, we so have the video is playing here you could hopefully you could hear it too what this does and when I click away it stops and it's in the pause state. But when I didn't have this, and I'm just going to take out this one over here. Um, let's go ahead and refresh that. Do I have my, yeah. Or which one is this? So we'll play the it video. It is controls. And this is actually and you can quite see that useful. it's still playing the video. Um, there are cases where you, you can, can actually that, yeah. see I didn't a click lot on this of performance benefits by changing this value from and of course I didn't take out of the close to, button one so uh, when I close that the video stops and so that's that over there um, the other thing I did with this YouTube script uh, just for fun was uh, create a button that I can play and pause it and we'll just go over that that's gonna be the last thing we go over um, I'm not gonna get too deep into this whole API because uh, it really depends on what you really need for your website and maybe there's no point in going all the way down deep. 
in terms of me using it, I didn't go deep myself. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Why don't we why don't we do this first? Uh, let's look at what this button does. And um, well, because like I said, it didn't register these on clicks on the modal. I decided to put the button on this page, this first page over here. And what I made it to do was I made it to look at the player state and play and pause the button. Okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned why putting the script over here is important, but um, you probably already know it. The functions created in the YouTube script, uh, they need to be in front of something like this main.js if you wanted to be able to use it in the main.js. See how I used the pause video function? I created that in the YouTube script, pause video right here. And I also have play video, stop video, and uh, get player state. Or actually, I don't think I created a stop video myself, but I created these guys, and they will be used in the React. And so, say your video was, say your video was on this first page. You don't even need to use jQuery to do anything. Um, you could probably use uh, React for everything, but just because it wasn't really working too well on the modal, I went over to the jQuery and I just started using my functions there. But anyways, I created this button. Um, handle click and the button is going to use a state. The state is going to be play just because once you refresh the page the video is not going to be playing and so we want to see a play button for your options. And what happens is it'll check it, it'll say okay is the player state and um, let me go over player state real quick. Player state Uh, player state. Okay, player state is just these numbers. If you do player dot get player state, it'll return numbers for you. A number. Uh, negative one is unstarted. All of this. And so what I did was I created that function inside my script or my YouTube JS file, and I returned the player dot get player state. And so from over here, I check. Okay, what the player? What is the player state in? If it is one, that is playing. And so I want the button to begin to give me the option of pausing the video. And so when I pause the video, um, I when I click the button, I want to pause the video. But once the video is now paused, I want it to say play because that's my next option. And if the video or if the get player state is not one, which means it's in any of these other states, I want it to play. Um, so say it's paused, that'll be number two. If it's unstarted, it'll be number negative. One, so I just said uh, if it's not one, then I'm going to um, play the video because that's what the button said. And once it starts playing, once this line runs, it's gonna start playing. So I want the button to say pause. And so if something goes wrong, I just had this else statement to give me what the player state was. So let's go ahead and listen to this play. A specific option. So you could hear the guy's voice there. And it, and uh, we have a note in the documentation. Button kind of change to pause. More about and now I pause the button. I, cr I plus the, press the pause button and now it says play. Um, you could likewise probably stick that video on that home screen, but um, it doesn't really matter too much where you put that video. These functions will work for you. And um, depending on how you create the modal yourself, um, you could get the React events to work on the modal, of course. I, Like I said, I got this uh, layout from html5up.net, and so I didn't feel like doing a deep dive into kind of how, where the quirks were in making that modal, so I just decided to go with jQuery on the function. But, so that pretty much wraps up this video on what I, what I did with that uh, YouTube iframe API. It's very helpful for when you want more control over your videos that you're putting on your websites. Uh, more control than the um, definitely more control than these URLs uh, parameters can give you. Uh, yeah, this is very limited to what you can do with it, and sometimes um, it doesn't work all the time, depending on maybe what browser you're on or whatnot. So, I if you want to do multiple things with it, if you really want to customize how your video plays, how it um, works with your viewer, your uh, whoever that person is, um, I recommend this API thing to use it. If you have any questions, um, just comment down below. 
if you want to see me fully change this website into a React from Static HTML, comment that also. And um, yeah, don't be, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one.